Hi, I'm Monica Colby. Welcome to the peer review team for Symposium 7 in the Community Risk Reduction Model Program Evaluation. And welcome to all of you who get to hear what it is that we're going to say to the peer reviewers so that you know how to best impress them. So when we look at program evaluation, we are looking at four main pieces the formative evaluation process, impact, and outcome. And keep in mind, reviewers, that while they need to have detail and show evidence that they accomplish these things, that they actually reduce some amount of risk as much as you can prove that, we also are giving them a very short amount of space to do that. So they should be hitting details, numbers, highlights, concrete, uh, what they did, but also not getting all the way into the depth of, and then we did this, and then we did this, and then we did this. So their, their process won't be really detailed in every little step that they did, but they still should be explaining it in just a couple of sentences uh, so that you can understand that other people could potentially duplicate those efforts. Maybe they just need to talk to them about the details more, but to make sure that the overall program um, was a success or a failure. We would accept someone who shows how they did something that's traditional and brilliant and it didn't work and why. I guess that would work too. We're also looking for those traditional five E's. Um, and certainly if they use something else, that's wonderful. Uh, but we're looking for that multiple um, attack, something that is more likely to work and to be effective. Uh, so education alone is great. You could talk about a program and how you changed knowledge, but if that didn't lead to big picture changes in efficiency or redu reduction of loss of life or reduction of incidents or reduction of severity, then it just isn't enough to be a full program. It's just that's just an evaluation of one piece of something. We're looking for something that's bigger and uh, bigger picture. So the rubric you have and can always go and download. On each of those evaluation pieces, you're able to give zero to four points. You'll have um, stars on there and you can give zero to four in each one. In the formative evaluation, we are looking for what the risk was who they decided to focus on or how they decided and how they decided that um, but what they decided to do and we're looking for their big picture goals of reductions um, or increases in efficiency um, and we're looking for what their step-by-step -step was like here's what we're going to do this year we're going to get a thousand kids to wear bike helmets, but that's only part of it. They also need to have, not that they set out for a thousand bike helmets, we're looking for a program that started out saying, we are transporting too many kids to the hospital or too many kids are getting hit by cars when they are riding their bikes or when they are on their horses or whatever. And we want they're having to stay two nights in the hospital and we want to reduce the damage that is happening that's what we're looking for here so four points you have to show that you had a hazard there here's the risk to our community for that hazard here's the target audience and why we chose them here's what we decided to do for an intervention and here are the objectives to get there so our big picture what we're going to reduce in risk and then down to the smaller picture and that they included their method uh, to make the decision and it doesn't need to be again really detailed it could be we looked at the hospital's community uh, risk assessment and they said that kids without bike helmets is a really big problem but it's not something they're going to be tackling because they're working on cancer or heart disease. So that's what we're picking up. Um, three points is they still have to have all of that risk, target audience, intervention, program objectives. They're all sound. They're all good. They just didn't do a good job in explaining how they got there. That would be three points, but they still have to have everything else. Now, if they're missing some of those pieces, 
then it is two points. They've got only some of the pieces, one point. They didn't really understand what a formative evaluation is or didn't tell you anything about it. Those are zero. Let's look at the process. Process is what they did. How did they come up with their strategy? How did they get it done? What were barriers that they came up with and overcame? Um, you know, so in this case, how did they get helmets? Um, who did they use to get them out? Where did they go? Um, did they do an education with them? Did they do billboards? Uh, whatever it is along there. So giving good information of here were our partners, here's what we did, here's how we reached out to our community, and here's how we measure, you know, and then we were checking to see if kids were actually wearing helmets. Um, we went to the places where they wore them and gave them out, whatever it is along those same lines. Um, if they can do that in a way that someone else could go, okay, I could go and get my equivalent of those stakeholders together and um, I could do this, then that's four. If they did most of that, three, and then just down until they say what actions are taken, like, ah, we did this, but it wasn't really measurable, um, not something, they're not showing you anything that could be, some things have to be counted in order to show your impact. And so in the process, they need to have the things that can be counted in some way, some way measured of how effective it was or how much they did of it um, in that process. Not all of it has to be uh, measurable in that way, but uh, some of it does need to be there. The impact are those measurable measurables, uh, changes in knowledge. So before we would have said we gave a pretest and post-test and here we would say, you know, 85% had a 50% increase in, in knowledge, or there was a, an average of 60% increase in knowledge or attitudes. Uh, a change in behavior. We did surveys, you know, before we would have said we conducted five surveys. And then here we would say we actually saw an increase from before the program to after the program, 20% uh, more kids were wearing their helmets. Uh, counting out, we gave out 1,000 helmets. Um, we responded to 20 fewer bike crashes or that in the hospital, you know, they saw fewer or they did look to be reduced in their severity. And then in the outcome evaluation, oh, why did that skip? Let's go back. In the outcome evaluation, those are the big picture long term. So to get a four, there needs to be a lot of proof. You can't actually prove risk reduction depending on how theoretical you want to get, but a strong evidence, strong pile of evidence that there was a long-term reduction to injury, death, or economic losses, or so uh, whether it was the, again, efficiencies, we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, so whether it was so after five years, there's 20%, we did get a 20% reduction in the number of kids who were dying from bike injuries or fewer were being kept overnight in the hospital and looks to be because they had helmets on or something else that also uh, impacted that. If there hasn't maybe been enough time, uh, they only have two or three two years of data, three years of data, it looks really promising, they're starting to see a decrease, then we could give them four points for that. Um, and we would take a look at that. Three points, yeah, they are associated with their long-term goals, but there really wasn't a big risk reduction. There's nothing really significant about it. They have tracked it and they do they're not just saying we gave out a thousand helmets and we know that's going to do a good job. They, their goal was to decrease the number of kids going to the hospital overnight uh, because of during a bike crash. So they are measuring that, which is good, but they didn't really see a difference in, in their program. 
that's really interesting and something we'd want to share with people, um, but it wouldn't get those points because they didn't really get to what the big goal was. And then if they didn't really have any outcomes like that, they were just focusing on getting out helmets and hoping that would do something good for the community, which I'm sure it did. But we're looking for evidence that it really is something that works and it really worked for that community. Uh, so zero points if they haven't been doing this. This was just a great idea, but they don't even know if it works or not, or they have no way of measuring if it works, or they never made the goal to big picture. How is this going to be effective? Now, this last one, um, it's on some of the rubrics. We've actually removed this, but again, let me explain some of it because it goes back to those what um, impacts and outcomes and, and what that process was. So it was how much you actually did to reduce risk. Did you, or create efficiencies? Um, this was just a knowledge only. They got their goals done. That's great. Give them a couple of points. Um, what we did in the past and then, but if it actually changed behavior or the environment or you could prove a reduction of life loss or injury loss or economic loss, like in the case of efficiency, you could have, um, we were able to inspect more buildings with fewer people or we were able to spend less time in service uh, or, you know, out of service on a scene and get back to, um, being available again, uh, we were spent less time at the hospital, whatever, whatever you're looking for there, those would also qualify as things we'd look for. But that's what we're looking for in the outcomes. So there's not a separate piece of it. But in those outcomes, we're not just looking for did they get smoke alarms installed or did they get fire sprinklers installed, but did it change things? Did it help the community? Is there a reduction in risk? Not just because we're pretty sure that that is a way to reduce risk, but we're looking for did this really do something um, positive for the community? Can you show this? So. Oh, there we go again. Uh, was the goal to reduce risk or increase efficiency? Was there a goal that they spelled out that identified they wanted to reduce some sort of risk or loss of use of resources? There it goes again. Is there documentation for what they did all along the way? That's high level, give the four points. And then that big picture, did they really make a difference in that community risk reduction? So it's great when you have a program and you've got all those little pieces and you're looking to see, did this class work? But this is about, did that class add to the big picture? Is this something that is helpful? So if you have questions, please reach out to a coach. Coaches, if you have questions, please reach out to me or Teresa. Uh, peer review, please reach out to me. And um, you can also help each other out with some of these if you have questions. But we want you to give your honest interpretation. You are experts at this. You have already shown that you know what we're talking about when we say community risk protection and how to evaluate a program. So we trust you more than we trust our opinions. So so yours carry a lot of weight. Um, go with your instincts of whether you think this is a model program, whether this is something that as we raise the bar on doing a good job in our industry, is this something that we should hold up in front of everyone else? Thank you very much.